Order of Light presents A new era of contact UFO sightings and strange anomalies Secret space programs and off-world adventures Advanced technologies and new discoveries Extraterrestrial abductions and contactees Now is the time to speak as we explore the unknown, the uncertain, and unseen, we are the Disclosure, and these are those stories. Hello, all of you wonderful beings of light. Welcome back to the channel. So happy that all of you are here tonight. We have an absolutely amazing story and experience coming from Elsa Dillon, coming from Australia. Now, tonight's episode Elsa is not the only one of her family that has had this experience. She has a family of 10, her children, her entire family, all experiencers, having many different encounters. Her one daughter and another daughter, I believe as well, have these drawings and paintings of these beings, absolutely phenomenal and amazing. But Elsa, she's had quite a remarkable journey, and we just got done talking a little bit, going over some of the little details, and um, I'm just absolutely blown away. A lot of synchronicities, a lot of connections between my mother and Elsa and some of her experiences. So with that being said, Elsa, welcome to the show. And before we get started, everyone, hit that like button. Don't make me crawl through this camera and force your hands to hit that little like button. It takes two seconds, not that hard. So everyone, please smash that like button. With that being said, Elsa, welcome to the new era of contact. Glad you're here. And could you first start off by telling us a little bit about yourself, just a little bit about who you are, your background, some of the things you've done, and then we'll get into the the, the good stuff. <laughs> uh, my husband and I are fashion photographers. Oh, and wow. we, traveled, we traveled the world shooting celebrities and uh, fashion magazines and advertising separately. <laughs> and we came together. We came wow. together in 1997 and things changed dramatically uh, the day before I met my husband I got uh, electrocuted mm. uh, I was out I don't know how long I was out for I don't know if I died or or what happened but I woke up and I was shaking and uh, the doctors said don't have coffee, don't have a shower, don't walk. <laughs> How did you get electrocuted? What happened? What caused I was, that? I was uh, painting my apartment in Sydney. And uh, I had my little dog there. And uh, there was a cord hanging down and the caretaker of the building said it was dormant. So I just cut it with some scissors. Yeah. Oh, no. And you went up like a fourth, like like a firework. Boom. Well, I was on a, I was on top of a ladder up high, so I was up near the ceiling. And I woke up on the other side of the room on the ground, so it would have been a pretty big hit on the head too. I woke up to my dog licking my face. Wow. And then sure. uh, I looked down at the scissors, and the scissors had a huge hole in them. They were, you know, industrial scissors because they cut wire, and they had a huge hole in the metal. And I realized that I was quite a whack. <laughs> You're lucky next, to be alive. Wow. Yeah. The next day, uh, but uh, back then I was uh, 22, 21. So you just kind of get on with things back then. It wasn't, you just go, oh, that happened. And then I yeah. met my husband the next day. Well, I didn't meet him the next day. We had a date. <laughs> and uh, he... We went on the date and uh, he, he, I told him about electricity and, and, we, and we hit it off really well straight away. Anyway, uh, so Richard There was a have, spark. There was an instant spark in between yeah. you guys. No <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> Literally. And uh, we, uh, we have eight children. Children. Uh, big family, and, right? Right here? This is the family? family? Yeah. 
never wow. held a baby in my life ever. I was not maternal in any way, but um, I knew when I met Richard that, that I was going to marry him. Wow. I would have um, lots of things happen when I would hug Richard. I would see the future with him. I would see to the detail of how we would get married. I would see, um, I see, I've seen things even further ahead than this date now. Uh, it's something about him and I together. It's like we were meant to be together. He told me that he came looking for me. He came back from overseas. He was living in New York and London. He had homes in both places and he was married over there. Oh, he was wow. married to someone very shortly for a year called Ilsa. Whoa. I know. <laughs> and um, he came back and he went, he kept hearing my name in Australia. So he went looking for me and he found me and he just knew that he was meant to be with me before he had even seen what I look like. Wow. Almost like he knew he was looking for Elsa. He just had yeah. the wrong one at first. And then he finally <laughs> found the right Elsa. He's like, I don't know who, where or who she is. Her name has to be Elsa. And it just yeah. so happened you were over over the pond in Australia. <laughs> yeah. So wow. it, you, you sort of start getting the magic of it. So uh, we, we realized that we were going to be together. We got married and I went on this. Uh, Richard's very awake. He's been awake since birth. He's just, he's always meditated. He's in the sun. He's um, very understanding of government practices and he's just so aware of most things. He's an excellent chess player. He was Australian motocross champion for years. So he's Whoa. just, he, everything he does, he peeks at. He's yeah. that type of person. He's an only child. And when uh, we met, I, we, I just st I started evolving because I came from a very sheltered upbringing where, um, you know, the, the policeman, the doctor, the lawyer, they're all the good people and we're just following suit. And, and that's how I was brought up. When I met Richard, it just all basically crumbled and I realised that um, everything was energy or frequency. Money wasn't money anymore. It was just energy. And I realised that uh, how we live had to be energy as well. So I got into studying feng shui and astrology and numerology and we just, it wasn't, we weren't obsessed with it, but we were just, it was just part of our daily practice. So it was very important that the energy in the home was good, not only in the home but under in the ground as well. So we would uh, study the river lines under where we would live. We would study the crystals in the area. Uh, the geology. Geology. And then then that would connect with astrology. And so we were always doing, all, always. So we were cleaning up our act basically in preparation for the kids. That's With awesome. the kids coming through, uh, when I fell pregnant, which was very interesting the day I fell pregnant, was at on a solstice, which is, a, a, and it was a solar eclipse. <laughs> oh. And the day that I fell pregnant was at a um, ancient indigenous burial, uh, not burial ground, uh, sacred site that has Egyptian hieroglyphs. Oh, wow. And we were there for probably six years, and it's not known to the public, this place, but it's known to um, a, a gentleman and his son team in uh, just down the road from where we live called um, Steve Strong and Evan Strong, and they're from Forgotten Origin, and they study all the Gosford glyphs and hieroglyphs in this region. I'm going to have to anyway, have them come on the show. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty amazing people. And uh, anyway, this location that we were at was called The Beginning Place. And so we fell pregnant with our first four children 
with me sitting on these rocks where all the uh, spacecraft are drawn into the rocks and stuff and the hieroglyphs as well. Wow, the beginning. But at the time, yeah, at the time we did not know. I mean, we knew they were drawings from the Indigenous, but we didn't know all the in, all the story. So we're bringing in our children and uh, we're bringing them up without any, we wanted them to come in, we class them, we call them clean skins. And we didn't have any um, interference with the medical system or hospitals. We had home births. And uh, we just wanted them to come in as clean skins. Mm -hmm. We didn't want them to have our fears. So, and I had a lot of fears. So uh, we went into doing kinesiology. So uh, peeling back the onion skins of your mental program, basically. Uh, undoing that program, undoing this program, undoing that program. And kinesiology is a great way to, great tool to, to do that with. We studied uh, animal language, so animals crossing your path and animal contact. Uh, what else? And herbs, healing with herbs. So we heal with herbs. So we believe that you don't need to have Western medicines. So we don't take any Western medicines. We heal with herbs. It's true. Everything we need to be healthy and survive, it can be found in nature. End of story. Done. It's all there. We don't need it's, anything else. Yeah, they're gifts right there in front of us. I mean, most of the time you will be walking over them in the street and you don't even know they're there and they're yeah. the cure for cancer. Or yeah. <laughs> like we dandelions, dandelions, yeah. <laughs> you know. We love dandelions. I'm so glad you said dandelions. Um, <laughs> we uh, also understand that everyone that also crosses our path is crossing our path for a reason and there is no randoms. Exactly. So uh, also we believe that when the children came through at 10 days of age, we would have an astrology reading of that child to help us understand the personality and oversoul of that child so that Ooh. when we were um, when we were bringing up each child, I didn't want to bring them up as me or Richard. I wanted to bring each child up as their identity that they had from the stars. So we practiced that. But we weren't obsessive about it we just did it and and we didn't talk about it with anyone we just did it we we it wasn't a big show or anything like that we just this is how we we were this is how we got through our day today it helped i felt it helped me become a better mom and with those astrology readings now that it's been years and years after having these children were those original readings 10 days after they were born did it turn out to be accurate? Did it help you? The accuracy is incredible. Really? Absolutely wow. incredible. Even today, I will go back to those readings and um, wow. But that, that in particular astrologer, she used, to, she used to be fascinated by our family because we'd ring her and say, oh, by the way, we're pregnant again because the kids are... We had kids within a 10-year period. So every time we would tell people that we were pregnant, they were like, what, again? <laughs> again, again, nine total, nine total children. No, eight kids, eight kids. Eight, eight, eight. all right, yeah. wow, eight. Whew. That's, in that's ten, one in after ten, another. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Not and much so, of a break. No, no break. <laughs> uh, so she would she called it like she has a Bible on us. So we would have reading. So we'd have the kids reading, but then we would have a family update reading when we would touch base with her. But if, if I spoke to her about her readings, it was like she had amnesia. It's like she would do a reading for a client and then that was it. She didn't she didn't know what she was reading any further than that reading. So you couldn't go any further with her on that because she just it was gone. It comes yeah. in, it goes out. Out, yeah. So she's not meant to hold it. She's a channel, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, that's it. Yeah. So um, the kids are the kids. Kids are amazing. They really l have fallen into the role of everything that was foretold. Wow. And 
it just it did it really helped us as parents because then we could see that personality and that personality and be more understanding of it oh that's just how they are oh that's how just they are so we wouldn't uh be hard on them for that situation or hard because we just we wanted to bring them up as uh as we were more guides with them and support for them rather than you do this you do that in saying that we do live on a farm and chores are huge like the chore list on the farm is a lot for a young kid in today's society because when other kids come to our home they they go what you have to do that you have to you have to chop wood you have to no feed video the games <laughs> what and this is before breakfast <laughs> so yeah. uh we we have discipline but uh where we've allowed them to uh be be truthful to who they are which then brings us to what's going on with us now and so we uh, had the children we went through the financial crisis in sydney and shifted to byron bay and we were up here in byron bay and uh things began to happen this was in 2011 we'd only 2011. had seven we only had seven children at this stage. We, our littlest one is called Jeannie and she hadn't come through yet. She was pregnant. We were pregnant with her but we, we didn't know and we shifted. And then people started uh, presenting to us in the street. People would come up and hug us, cuddle us, hold our hands. They would call us aliens, you're different, what's so different about you people? And we didn't understand what was going on. <laughs> And one, uh, we, we were in a farmhouse and our two children started to get quite ill, really ill. Mm. And that was our eldest, Gemma, and our number four baby, Jet. And their health had deteriorated rapidly, like it was a daily thing. Uh, our daughter's face swelled up to here. She looked like a stroke victim, one eye shut. She would go through screaming fits. Um, she would fall on the ground and scream and cry. She couldn't remember anything. Um, mm. Our son, his his symptoms were he couldn't heal. So if he cut himself, the wound would stay there and get bigger and bigger. It got it real. I kept asking the universe, please help us. We can't work out what's wrong with our children. What's wrong with our children anyway? Uh, one night a raining night our meter box blew up and exploded and f smoke filled the house and uh we rang the electrical company and they would just happen to be driving past our driveway we live out in the middle of nowhere three huge electricity trucks driving past our driveway as i'm calling them they drive down our driveway normally they would take you know hours to get to where we are and they get to our house and they said, wow, you guys must be ETs or something. You guys must have angels looking after you because there is no way we would have got here otherwise. You would have had like a three or four hour wait. wait. This, this electrical box blew out the whole region in power. So everywhere, it was pitch black. And they're coming and they kept these trucks everywhere and they had lit up everything. So it was like a... Um, Area fifty one, yeah. Like all the and they all, all the got spotlights, rain. the floodlights. Yeah, because yeah, it because it took out the whole power line. Wow. <laughs> um, so anyway, they kept these workers kept saying to us, "You guys are amazing. You guys are amazing." Not one of the kids woke up to see all the action going on. Rich and I were in amazement that the kids were. They asleep. slept through it. The whole thing. The whole thing. They missed the whole thing. Anyway. Uh, they came out the next day and it was the head of the electricity in our region, the whole region. And he came up to me and he said, I'm going to put a digital meter box on. And I said, I don't want a digital meter box on. I've heard bad things about them. And he said, okay, I understand. I'll put an old one on. And I said to him, how far away is your meter box from your house? And he said, my meter box is 30 meters from my house and I wouldn't have it any other way. And he winked at me. And he said, I know you, you and your angels know that. And I had this surge of energy come through me and his eyes were piercing blue and I just thought, this man's connecting with us. Anyway, we researched from that 
ETs, angels and ghosts. From that point on, it started getting more intense, more intense. Wow. Uh, probably a week after that, I was um, doing my hair like, in, like this in the mirror very early in the morning. And I had a memory recall in the mirror, which a lot of mirror work, and they um, showed me the bust of Nefertiti. Oh, wow. <laughs> and my father's Egyptian, and the only artifact that he had in the house was the bust of Nefertiti. When he came from Egypt to New York to Australia. Wait, so you, came, you, your, your father is Egyptian? My father's Egyptian. Wow. Continue. I know. Wow. Right? It, it's getting. So my father <laughs> used to uh, play in the pyramids in Alexandria. No which way. Is my middle name. my wow. middle name's Alexandria. He would play in the pyramids and he always told me as a child that the stars built the pyramids. <laughs> no matter what they tell you, the stars built the pyramids and everyone there knows it. And that was that was that was probably as far as my ET experience would went as a child. That's as far as I knew up until this electrical box blowing up in 2011. So you got me as a child. That's as far as I knew. ETs was the stars built the pyramids to 2011. That was it. Yeah. So I research EMF. Our children had EMF damage. So we shifted our children away from the power meter box because they were in a bunk bed. Gemma and Jet were in a bunk bed. So these two children were affected by the power meter box that blew up. Mm -hmm. We shifted them away and their health returned. They stopped grinding their teeth. Her face went down. She started having memory recall. We took them to an iridologist, both of them, iridologist specialists, and all of them said the same thing. It's like we're looking in the eyes of 98-year-olds. Yeah. People need to know what EMF does to their body. It's really bad scientifically. It can cause hallucinations, migraines, um, radiation burns, essentially burning, rashes, irritations, paranoia. Yeah. It, it can make someone lose their mind. Uh, your telephone poles, if you live close to a wire, I suggest everyone to get a reader, an EMF reader, and go around your house and go near your outlets because if you have a broken outlet or a meter and it's producing all that energy, it can make you physically, scientifically ill. It's very, very bad for you. Yes. Well, the, the owners of the home, they had their baby in that spot and their baby is probably older than me and in that be still in a home. So. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty, it's sad, but it's it's apparent, like it's happening. And we did buy a meter back then and we learned about EMF and we learned that it depends also on the sockets. So uh, I'm not sure if that's what they call them, but a socket is, so you have some that have three points and some that have two. Be wary of the ones that have two because you actually become the third one. Yeah, there's no so, grounding. You are the yeah. grounding. You're the grounder. And that's what happened to our kids. The kids, instead of healing at night, they become part of the electrical system. So that's why they deteriorated so quickly. And they deteriorated in less than six months. Like they were, Gemma's brain was getting pushed from the swelling. I'm just saying how it's dramatic. So we uh, learn about EMF. And then this was before any towers were up. There were no towers up at this stage. So we didn't know about towers. <laughs> anyway, so we learned about EMF, angels, ETs, and then I'm having this Neff really like, and I don't know who Nefertiti is. Nefertiti, Cleopatra, it's just Hollywood to me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I look up Nefertiti and she starts communicating with me. But I don't know what's going on and I don't understand what's going on. So now I'm starting to think I'm going crazy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, then they start showing me the family and saying that basically you're the same as us. And I did not understand what she was saying. You're the same as us. You're the same as us. You're the same as us. Uh, so how can this be? Then I uh, saw a interview with Dolores Cannon and realized she was traveling 
through different eras. I went, oh, so people are doing this. <laughs> so yeah. I have to just work out what is going on. And then I realised that our family is repeating this realm. So we are in the same order, the same family members are in exactly the same order as that realm, which is a lot to uh, hit the family with because now the family are going, well, you can't tell people this. This is just crazy. So from 2011 to 2014, I just sort of kept it to ourselves and we would see craft. We learned about uh, plane spray and emf and so and then towers started what kind of crafts would you generally see could you give a description of a few of them what kind uh, of uh they take they start they started easy with us they not it wasn't as big as i've heard a lot of people have they started with um small craft like coming down on us at night um or dancing around and they would deliberately change their orbit so uh, their orbit would change or flash out or um, zigzag so that we knew that they weren't on an orbit. They really wanted to show us that they weren't on an orbit. Then we had the military craft come through. So we would have military come through. Uh, we would have, I, so I call them uh, 3D military. So we have uh, human kind military but then there's all different versions of military that's how our family describe it so there's the military that is um we call it cloaked or um shape public and private military there's two so different the, yeah so the military would come through but there would be no turbulence or no noise mm -hmm. um or it would be an unusual looking military like not the normal or it would be from another country so we're in Australia, but we would have U.S. military fly over. And, and our kids were like, why is military U.S. flying over our house? Yeah. So. That's and it. then the and were thing, some of the crafts you saw, did they, uh, the ones that weren't the military, did they look like stars, plasma, lights? Uh, what? How would you we describe had a lot them? That, uh, we had ones where they would do... Um, I used to love Star Wars as a kid, and I, you know, where they go into hyperspace, they, you would always see them go. Yeah, we were like that. So they would. Uh, we had ones where they would come at you like that. So imagine that coming oh, wow. at you and then go through you, sort of thing, as well. Uh, so you'd think that it was going to hit you, kind of thing, and then it would. We had. Um, I would wake up in the middle of the night and hear uh, metallic noises in the clouds like trumpets sometimes what they would sound like or um, uh, a, a metallic, uh, like a machinery screeching like that together. Mm -hmm. and like, yeah, or, yeah. Or hum, it would go for a long time and hum. So I would, it would draw me, I would get up in the middle of the night and just go out in the paddocks. Mm. And I did this for, for years and Richard would freak out because we have wild dogs here. Oh. And, deadly snakes like the deadliest in the world and he was like i really don't want you going out in the middle of the night I, I i'd say i'm okay it's all right i'm going out i usually get you got them dangos up. right dangos yeah. Well, yeah. dingoes yeah dingoes um so i'd go out in the middle of the night and uh just i would be with the stars and where we live it's pitch black so there's no city lights so you really see the stars um and we shifted to another farm so while we were in this byron region we probably we've shifted four times in the in this area this uh new home that we shifted to i went out in the paddock one night uh and i was in the middle of the horse herd and the horses were protecting me and we study um natural horsemanship we train all our horses so uh, I watch their um, movements and their um, characteristics of each horse and I understand what's going on. Anyway, I realised that danger was approaching so they herded around me to protect me and then they started sniffing the ground. So that's what they do when a storm or thunder comes. They start sniffing the ground and they take turns in sniffing the ground. Anyway, then 
they stopped and they all stopped and they all faced the same direction mm. <laughs> and uh, their ears pricked up and they were facing south. And I looked up and followed their ears twitching. And as I look up, I'm watching the hairs on their ears and then I look up and I'm looking at the stars and the stars then turn to a black mirror. Mm. And then all the veins start shooting through. Blue mm. veins, but um, electric blue veins, and it was alive. This this black mirror was alive, and it was the whole valley. We were on a two hundred acre valley farm, and it took up the whole. But I could see it was triangular. I could see the edges of it, and then I could see stars. Was this, this was this a portal, a craft, or a craft no, that was a portal? A craft shape it was triangular but it was the whole valley it was huge it was massive. it felt massive huge <clears throat> and it, it kind of looked like a black mirror as you're describing yeah. right okay it it had a hum energy to it but you couldn't hear it but you could feel it like mm -hmm. it was you could feel that it was alive it was moving north and I kept looking up at it going this is amazing but I kept watching the horses because I actually then the fear kicked in Oh. And I was watching the horses, and the horses held ground. If the horses started to gallop or run, then I knew that I was in trouble. But they they knew I was safe, but they stayed there the whole time. Anyway, uh, I, I remember looking up, and I remember feeling the noise, and then I remember it got heading north, and then that's it. I don't remember walking back through the horse herd. I don't remember walking through the fence. I don't remember walking over the water troughs. I don't remember taking my gum boots off, shutting the doors. I don't remember getting into bed. I don't remember getting into the bed. Like it, it's a bit of a journey going out to a paddock back into a farmhouse. I do not remember any of that. Woke up the next morning and Richard said, how did you sleep? And I said, oh, Actually, I remember seeing a craft and I told him about it. And he goes, wow, well, that was a big one. And that was it. Mm. Then for the after that, for six months, um, the kids stopped calling me mum. They stopped talking to me like normal. They said I smelt different. Oh, wow. They said that I was possessed. Something was changed in you. Yeah, they they said, you're getting worse. We didn't relate it to the craft experience. They just thought I was um, probably channeling too much or something's gone wrong. Mm -hmm. But it's not Elsa anymore. Even Richard stopped calling me Elsa. Uh, it was affecting our marital situation and my relationship with the kids because they don't want to come near me. So now I'm like an alien in the family. But, like, you don't think of yourself like that. You just, we thought I was possessed. That's what they kept saying, you're possessed. Yeah. But to me, I did not feel any different. Anyway, Richard said, this is getting really full on and um, I miss you. But I, to him, I was like, what do you mean you miss me? Anyway, say, I'm going to take you. I'm right please. here. How can you miss me? I'm right here. <laughs> Hello. I'm the same, same person. And he's like, no, you're different. But I didn't understand what they kept saying. So they took me to kinesiology and I had kinesiology and she went through everything, hydration, my salt levels. Uh, she went through all the flowers. She went through past life. She went through my birth, everything. And she said to me, you are a clean slate. That's what she said to me. She said, I'm going to try one last thing. And she said, I haven't done this before, so um, bear with me. She asked if it was an outer world experience and it took her straight to that date. Wow. Which it sounds like it was some sort of like missing time. You went out there, you saw this giant triangular craft that filled up the whole valley essentially. You don't yep. remember going back. Definitely sounds like there was missing time. I'm sure there was a lot more going on that you weren't aware of. And it, that's what she, at that moment, that's when you started to say, whoa, there's something else going on with that night, right? So the kinesiologist at this stage now is freaking out because mm -hmm. obviously she's not experienced with outer world experiences. And neither, to, 
really, neither was I, but I was probably adjusted. I wasn't as freaked out about it because I knew that that day we had been seeing them. So it didn't freak me out, but she freaked out. She had to leave the room and collect herself. She came back in and uh, she said that I had been gone for 10 years. 10 years. Mm. Wow. So that's a lot for someone to take on <laughs> my brain anyway. So I got back into the car and said to Richard what had happened. And, and, uh, and that was it. She said 10 years, but you didn't, you didn't know what at that point in time, you didn't know what happened during that 10 years. You're just trying to process all this going down. At this point, to me, it was just a lot of words, but I knew wow. how important kinesiology is. So I get back into the car and I said, because they wanted, they felt, I felt like I had to leave there very quickly. And what happens with a lot of the times where we share information, people have to leave our presence quite quickly. And I know why. It's because their frequency isn't quite ready to absorb all the information and it could literally blow their mind. So yeah, I felt like I had to leave the practice. They kind of were pushing me up. Bye, see you, thanks for coming, get out of here. <laughs> and they, they're lovely people, but I just felt like I had to, they wanted me out. Um, Your experience funny. was out of their realm of uh, knowledge and comfort for comfort. them to, yeah. Yeah, their human experience was feeling discomfort. So I'm I'm okay, I'm, I'm okay with that because I've felt this many times before. So I'm getting back in the car telling Richard about it and I said, it's from that day that I was with the horses. And he said, so you're not possessed? And I went, no. He goes, oh, the kids are going to be so happy you're not possessed. It's an ET experience. And, he, and I said, yeah. And they said I was gone for 10 years. And he goes, well, that's great. You're just not possessed. And that was it from t that. So we, so that was, uh, Six you months left at that. Boom. So done. 20, that's 2018. Oh, wow. So from 2018 to uh, we kept uh, doing our normal photo shoots, surfing, farm life. And then, uh, and then uh, we realized that um, we started seeing, we, we actually went to a, a psychic she's an astrologer and i couldn't get hold of this astrology in sydney so i got hold of this one in the uk and she did an astrology reading for me and she said to me do you have ets around you what do you call them i said well we call them beings and she says do you have one because i'm seeing hundreds and I was like, what, what, what? She said, multiple at sacred sites. You have many, many around you. And I was like, wow, wow. And she, she suggested that I come to her classes. But I thought they were astrology classes. So now she's asked me to join social media, basically, to go on Facebook or go on Zooms. And this is my now first interaction into um, social media about spirituality. So I joined one of her classes and she starts teaching all the different divinations. Every single one of them I could do, but like it was like I had, it was like I've been doing it for thousands of years. And not only could I do it, it was instantaneous. It was quite overwhelming at first. Uh, and then the kids started doing stuff. The kids Whoa. started drawing beings and like they would walk past someone on a zoom and say they're beings that i had just brought up and then they would go and draw them and not only draw them but channel their uh technologies and wisdom their... and knowledge etc wow yeah uh, a lot of them would take us to sacred locations or sacred sites that we don't know about and we would turn up and go wow there's a bora ring or there's a sacred Aboriginal tree, or there's a huge rock that looks like a temple. Mm -hmm. wow. And these locations aren't noted on any maps. How do Ooh. they know to send us to these locations? So then they we have started. Help. <laughs> yeah, so this is 2020. 
and we we still like developing it all and keeping it all and so now and the kids with, are with the drawings too i i would love to show uh you know your one daughter right Gigi. most of There's the four, drawing for the draw Gigi is our third child and she she studies uh, ancient astronomy and mythology and she'll go out and map like the ancient ones with her hands and she communicates to stars and they tell her what direction in the sky to look at and wait for them. Wow. And, and th she, this this is her drawing. here? That's Gigi her? Drawing. Yep. There's another one. So she's when she's drawing, she's she has more than one being usually around her and she has to ask a lot of them to wait. Wow. And, and they th come in and uh, they teach her each stroke. And as wow. she's painting, they explain to her why you're doing this. They they will some some of them will um they don't, uh, as I spoke with you before, their, their whole naming system is just purely for our experience. Um, yeah. Again, it's all just frequency, uh, but they do things to ease us into the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, it, they're beautiful. I really resonated when I saw these on your website, the spinbeings.com. Um, just absolutely incredible. I just that one on the one on the uh, white dress one. That was her first one. That was her first one she did. Yeah, first one with her and I, and I was uh, uh, t talking to a lady in uh, I think she's in Virginia, USA, and I said to her, "You have multiple beings around you at the moment." And Gigi had just woken up because we're in Oz time. So it was like 5 a.m. in the morning and Gigi came in. I said, Gigi, can you see these beings behind this lady? And she said they're Andromedas. I think that's the name. Andromedas, wow. I think, yeah, Andromedas. And, and that was it. And I stayed on the Zoom and she went off and had breakfast. I came out after the Zoom and she has started to paint these beings and that was the beginning. Whoa. And, um, I went, who are you painting? And she said, I'm painting the beings. And I said, what beings? And she said, behind that lady. And I went, really? And wow. then we started talking and then then the messages started coming, not only through her but through me. And then the little girls start drawing and then Jeannie and Gidget and the, all the kids start having all these experiences that they share. It was like wow. that 2017 was the catalyst that experience where you were gone, you know, the missing yep. time, all that. Wow. So from 2017 to 2022. So I'm in 2022. We had the Lismore floods going on, which we were right in the heart of. Big floods in Australia. Like catastrophic. We were protected. We were told we were protected and we could see that we were protected and we were there to heal and ground others through the experience. Mm -hmm. uh, there was many unusual circumstances that happened with the Lismore floods. That we, uh, it, it's another story in itself. And then I meet Mary Rodwell. Now Whoa. Mary Rodwell is interested in the kids because of their drawings. Yep, and here's, uh, as you're talking about, some of the other drawings yeah. and why she would be interested. I know I really resonated with uh, this one coming up here. Before you talk about Mary and the situation, I'm sure you're probably going to get back into the experience of when you had the missing 10 years and all that. But this being all the way to the right really, really stood out to me hard, the redhead. That one, uh, before well, us doing this i told you that one really speaks to me <laughs> she's um she's very powerful being that one and she's connected with the other realm for us and she's uh in the other realm she goes back she would be like a grandmother in and she assisted that family in the other realm and we've we've actually met someone that has energy like her in this realm now and she was uh, a, a part of 
uh, me in this process that I'm talking about. She was in our life for a few months and uh, she was amazing. She really did assist us in a huge way. So she's assisting the other realm and she's in 3D here assisting us now. It's, wow. It's, I, I still can't explain it and um, it's it's a tricky one to uh, for others to hear and comprehend but for us it happened so it's our truth uh if take it as it or leave it it's up to you <laughs> but it yeah. happened to us. it's we cannot <laughs> question someone else's experiences and reality none of us are in a position to question anyone of their realm of understanding of multiverses dimensional galactic connections we, we can't do that. And our experiences are our experience and nothing will ever change that. Absolutely. Now, yeah. um, Mary, I know a lot of my subscribers are very familiar with Mary and the work she does and all that. So I'm really curious of uh, what went down once you got a hold of her. How did that all happen? So uh, I got sent messages from the stars because <laughs> uh, I go out at night again and they just tell me stuff and so I'm out whether it's a moving craft or not they just talked to me and they said email Mary so I emailed Mary and Mary and I went back and forth with communications for a couple of weeks and then she said I would like to hear about your story meaning the kids so I get on and talk to her for three hours and uh, I tell her about the kids and then I told her, she said, how did it begin? And I said, well, it actually didn't begin with ET experience. It began with, um, we. Uh, the only word that I know in our language is reincarnation, but they're telling me it's incorrect. They told me that it's not reincarnation and there's no such thing as history and that this realm is repeating parallel to our realm mm -hmm. and they're as alive as we are and they keep telling me the same thing so i i got i have to go with that because <laughs> it's been drummed into me for many it's years it's all now. happening simultaneously there it is no past there is no present there is no future it's just one continuous ourobora you know a cycle yeah. all happening all at the same time multiple layers but all simultaneously beautiful so i mary said how do you describe that and i said well the way that um back in 2011 and 2014 the way i would um kind of prove it <clears throat> to richard and the kids because they thought i was crazy uh <laughs> they uh I would do regress. I taught myself how to regress. So I taught myself how to regress. And again, I was a very, it was very easy for me, very quick. And uh, I started regressing with Neff. And so Neff would regress with me and I would regress with her. So on separate uh, moments. So I wouldn't know when she's coming through and she wouldn't know when I was coming through. And we'd come through in the beginning as ghosts to each other or orbs, or lights, or songs. And then we started coming through more um, in physical form, I guess. So then Physically. I, yeah. So then uh, we actually started to say, well, how are we gonna prove this to each family member? <laughs> That's so, hard. <laughs> Yeah, well, she's got to prove it to a pharaoh, so and I've got to prove it to Richard, and he's pretty, um, uh, stern I would <laughs> anyway so uh, I went into a regress and I had a lot of uh, mold in my lungs which is a disease I don't know I've forgotten the name of it which I couldn't I was having trouble getting it out and uh, it would make me really severely cough I went into a regress with Neff and she took me through Toots tomb and there was wow. mold all over the walls and she showed me to clean the walls and we cleaned the walls together which is unheard of for her because they don't do that and then i came back through the regress and i told the kids what had happened within less than 24 hours in the news came out that there was mold in tootin's tomb and they had just found it <laughs> 
That's so awesome. the kids are going, this is really happening. And I went, it, this is really happening. So uh, we would have a regression. I'd go back. We'd do something there in her realm. And then history would change here. And the kids would say to me, how can history change? And I said, this is the this is 3D is this is the 3D reality presenting to you as proof so that your mum's not crazy, that yeah. it's not real, history's not real, it does change, and we're changing it. And she said, So does that mean you're powerful? And I said, No, I think that oh. every I believe in my heart that everybody can do things like this, we've just forgotten. And so they kept saying to me, well, that's amazing, but how are you going to tell people about this? So I told them. And, our, and our, j just real quick, your kids' questions to you are so powerful. You know, a lot of young children, if they heard their mom, that like she's going, you know, the, the fact they were asking these really good questions to you kind of gauges where they are at in their own spirituality even though they weren't quite to that point yet they were asking the right questions and that's so important that's huge well, because it's so real and because it was in the media and they were the ones that found it in the media too oh so, they they found it your kid so yeah. Wow. I'm not. A, I'm not, I don't like watch. Richard watches the news, and I the kids watch the news. But I'm not really. Uh, I again, I wasn't really into social media. So yeah. Uh, um, they only had up until this stage in history. So we're back in you know 2013 or 2014. They only had seven children in history, but we have eight. So yeah. I go back do a regress with Neff. And I said to Neff, uh, she said, we have the second son, but the second son's a secret. And I said, well, the second son needs to come out. So Neff then took me to meet Akem and we met Akem and Akem did not believe me either with Neff. But uh, there'd been a few other things that had happened where I had helped them with their diet and with um, sabotage and with um, corruption within their own government. Anyway, uh, so Neff and I go and present to a cam that we have to present the second son. So they have a second son ceremony where they bring him through the streets in Egypt. And I was allowed to be there with them on it. So it was oh, quite wow. amazing. I came back in the regression and told the family and then within again 12 hours I think because it starts speeding up so I think it was 12 hours they brought out in the news that there the, is a second son they possibly could have eight children and that wow. was awesome. that kid, so the kids get a buzz out of it because you know this is a family not family secret, but we, it's just something you can't really talk about in and public. I, I'm sure that was, although you know your own experiences, but I mean, for me, for example, with the UFO crash, there was some times where I thought, you know, my mom and I and our family, we we're just losing our minds. When something's covered up and the world's not talking about it, you start to second guess yourself. I'm sure these sorts of things was a big validation for you, even though in your heart, you know, to be real, just to see the physical manifestation of this information come to light, right? Was that a validation for you, especially coming from your own children? That's huge. Well, the, the children, so our children are, are one to 10 in years. So yeah. with the, the kids, so we've got, they've got genies two or three and Gemma's 10, so, and then as we went on, she was going to 15. So it's um, it's a challenging time for children as in, in being that, you know, the change of life as well. So I think I felt like once they started seeing that, that they uh, embraced it and they realised that this is what's going on and there's no way we're going to get away from this. Wow, wow. So, so then we so then we meet Mary in 2022 20, we've had the craft experience so we're having crafts experience we're having all this stuff go on and Mary says let's do the hypnosis 
she does the hypnosis with me, which is on one of our videos. And if I'm in dream state, I call it dream state or dream oasis. And I relive that 10 years with Mary. So you finally, I, I wanted to ask you, it's been going through my mind. What happened during the 10 years? So that all came to life within the regression with Mary? Is yes. that the moment? Oh, wow. Yeah. So the night before the hypnosis, they uh, um, they told me, you're going to be doing videos. And I was like, what? What do you mean I'm going to be doing videos? Like, I hate models. social media. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm, I mean, I do model videos with Richard already, but what do you mean I'm going to do? You're going to do more. And I was like, really? I thought with the whole lockdowns, it's all going to end. Like what's, you know, the whole what's the fashion, point? In, the fashion industry is closing, shutting down. Like all the publishers and everything are closing up, right? So I'm thinking, what is what does they what do the stars mean that I'm going to do more videos? And this is the night before Mary. Uh, they also showed me um, with before um, the hypnosis. They showed me my near death experience when I was three. Oh, what happened there? That that that's a common occurrence with a lot of our guests. So please, uh, if you can, share what happened with that. So now I'm getting sucked back to when I saw Neff's bust as a child. And I used to have ringing in my ears and my parents thought that I was not quite right because I would just shut off because the ringing was so loud. I had um, a dragon type being around me as a, a guardian. Um, I called him my dragon and... Um, I would talk to him more than probably I would talk to my family or anything and he would talk a language with me and just um, encourage me that they don't understand. It's okay that they don't understand. That's what he would say to me. It's okay. Was it like a light language kind of sort um, of? No, or I'm going to say it's more and I know that a lot of viewers will jump on this and say it's. it was more like a snake kind of language to me made more sense than english and because i was only three anyway so my parents would take me to the local doctor and on a regular basis and they would get a big syringe i think to me the syringes were this big as a child <laughs> and they fill it with um hot water and then they uh surge it into your ear and um, it was very painful and it would send me deaf for a day or two and uh, sometimes I would have blood coming out my ears or I don't know, but they just thought they were doing the right thing because I had the ringing, right, in my ear. So my mum, we're leaving the doctor's surgery. My mum has her, my sister on her hip and she's holding my hand and we walk across a highway uh, three or four lanes going that way, three or four lanes going this way, and we're in the middle. We're in the middle and mum swings her hand forward and I thought we were walking. So I walk out and as I'm walking out, then I feel hot, like really like burning and I could smell burning hair smell. And then I look into um, this glass light and it was just burning light but I could see beings in the light like I could see like a race in there mm -hmm. um and it was very quiet but I could still smell the burning smell which was my eyelashes <laughs> my hair burning oh. burning on a headlight of a car so a car hit you yeah I still, my mum won't, I don't know to this day. Oh. I turn, I turn, uh, so when this went, felt like five minutes, but I don't know how long it was. And then I look around and there's cars everywhere and there's all these strange people screaming, everyone's screaming, but I can't hear anything. So it's. You were so young too. Oh man. It's so peaceful. I see my mum in terror and my sister in terror. Their whole faces are. Everyone's in terror except me. I'm in peace because it's quiet. <laughs> yeah. And it's also angelic because I've just seen into this white, um, 
white energy and uh so so and i had something that i i want to throw out too because something about what you just said really matches a lot i've had a few guests my one friend that came on she talked about her experience and her mom has never been really clear with her on the situation like she's holding back and also what you're saying about the ear i had an amazing interview with uh john charles melon uh secret space program uh, teleportation all that stuff but i started talking about ear issues and it's something i bring up a lot and a lot of us experiencers we all have them when i was a little boy and we kind of uncovered and john charles he had a lot of the same situations and he was electrocuted multiple times as well another correlation between your story and what's going on there and i've been electrocuted as well um but something going on with the ears i had a really bad ear uh my eardrum erupted when i was a little kid i woke up my pillow was filled with stuff and my family took me to the doctors and they're like, did you take a pencil and shove it all the way into your ear? No, I didn't even have pencils. It was on the weekend. And the doctors were saying my fingers were too big and not long enough to be able to get in there. So they had no idea what happened. I had really bad earaches. And then once I was around 13, 14 years old, it just stopped. It all went away. Never had another one again. Strange. But yeah another uh, correlation and what you're saying really matches up and so so we had the, so we, so so i'm about to go into mary's hypnosis i'm not in there yet so this is the night before and they're reminding me of that near-death experience i go okay <laughs> all right so now i go into the hypnosis with mary and uh i'm i'm completely out because i've never done a hypnosis before so i'm out like it's not like meditation hypnosis and it's not like regression and it's not like kinesiology. They all have a different flavour to them on the information and the way they extract it. And Mary coached me through it, but she said that she didn't have to step in too much. She said she, she said it was like I was a bit like a natural at it. So uh, I'm in the hypnosis and uh, they I was in the horse herd. So now they're taking me back to that night, right, on the november 2017 that's what we're we're targeting that hypnosis so i'm there um i hear the fox call i go out i'm in the middle of the horse herd they had to melt me to take me up like dissolve me dematerialize like dematerialization yep. <laughs> i go up in the craft and i'm become a gyroscope so i'm spinning no no um resistance nothing i'm just completely spinning and i'm spinning around uh so i would not freak out they would do a, a cycle or a rotation and make me go upside down so i could feel that i was upside down and i could see through the black mirror down to the horse herd and see that i was not there they wanted me to see that i was not there they wanted me to know i was up there I that that this wasn't something astrally happening to you and your physical body was laying down by the horses they wanted you to see your physical body is not there anymore yeah, i'm you not dead are... not fainted i am up there so okay now i'm spinning Whoa. around i'm spinning around and i can hear them but they're not allowed to come to me i know they're not allowed to come to me but i could feel all of them over on my right on my left i have neck and her realm on my left i can smell hummus i can smell frangipani i smell familiar with neff i had the whole realm on my left going on with neff and it's comfortable because i've been doing it for years now with her but on the right i'm very unfamiliar and i can't see them i don't understand why they didn't want to present so i mean so i'm going through uncertainty possibly going into a fear state so they would spin me back down again to look at the horses. The horses aren't freaking out. The horses aren't running. They're holding ground. So then I come back up. I'm okay again. They keep spinning me around. Then um, they start to show me all the um, craft veins that I could see. Start. Um, I can see them going through all my body. So while they're going through my body and... Uh, 
I'm going to say downloading, they were uploading as well. They, they, I felt like they were taking info out and putting it in. Mm -hmm. um, then it started to hurt. So I'm starting to feel pain. So then they go, here she goes into fear again, let's spin her. So he's seeing the horses again, so I go down again. They So they're really wanting me to be safe and feel comfortable with them. So they I'm wanted spinning. you to see the horses and to see the horses are all right. They're standing your ground. We yeah. need you to do the same thing right now. So calm down. Yeah. And you're calm like, down. no, I'm spinning around yeah. upside down yeah. and beings they, all over time, the place. Well, if you go into the fifth state, the, um, the transmission might not uh, gel properly or cause damage. So I, I was starting to understand it. Then I started to become playful with it. And playful is a big term in our family because I've got eight children. So being playful is a big thing for us, right? So now I'm starting to go like this through my hand. I'm realising that I'm actually gelatine and I'm not in form anymore as a human. So I'm realising that I am like a clear liquid in a gyroscape, in a gyroscope. So I'm moving. So sometimes I've got hands and sometimes I don't. And I could put myself inside my body and I could actually go through my body and go inside out like a sock, you know, when you're doing the laundry. Yeah. And pull. Yeah. So that's that's what's going on with me. So then I start, so they kind of like showed me, I guess, that so that it was like a Rubik's Cube to take my mind off the the uh, the work. Situation. Yeah. Done. <laughs> so the work that needed to be done had to keep going through me. And then I kept asking Neff, if she's okay and she was okay with it, uh, she, I said I kept asking, talking to her and seeing if that she had been done this before and she had not. This was her first encounter as well with this craft oh, like this. Wow. So now she's experiencing it with me, but she's more in her realm. So she's not in the gyroscope. It was only me in the gyroscope. Was she seeing it through you? Yes. Was that what was going on? So she yeah. she is seeing it through you, but not there herself. So, well, well so technically, she her, is through you. So yeah. she's regressing with me, while I'm in a hypnosis doing a regress with me. Like, can you see how multi-dimensional this is becoming? Right. This is La amazing. layers. So then, then, um, then there was just quiet, and I could hear, and I felt like they were. Uh, deciding the next moment and I could hear a lot of discussion and then it went really quiet and uh, then they all had to step back a bit like they I felt like they had to pull back a bit and it was just Neff myself and then I had realized what had happened another presence came through and it was my oversoul it was the yeah. three of us and I felt the most hugest emotion I can ever say I've ever felt and um, they weren't allowed to interfere because it was a sacred moment of the three together again. That's what and they said, three together again. And the oversoul, could you, for everyone that's listening, could you uh, elaborate and explain that a little bit? I know people are familiar with walk-in souls and other things of that nature. Uh, what uh, specifically is that so an oversoul in our belief system in our family how we have interpreted it is that you have an oversoul who has like a kind of like an essence or a personality but really it's neither of that it's a frequency and they have a role and they incarnate in different realms so they incarnate on earth and they can incarnate in other places as well. This oversoul that we connect with has only, has told us they've incarnated twice, the other realm and this realm. Okay, wow, perfect. Thank you for uh, describing that. Now now we know the layers, what's going on? So okay. then we've got the 10, 10 of us who have reincarnated twice and Richard's oversoul has called the nine of us in as an invitation that you 
have to accept <laughs> to come in again and ground on earth okay so i'm up in the <laughs> then they start um showing me uh i'm gonna say timelines we don't use usually use the word timelines we use moments so they show me moments so they start showing me moments in time future and past they showed me what was going on in the world now uh i they showed me um the pain that many are going through not just the ones here but the ones that are the seeds that are about to come through the pain that they will go through uh, i did ask them is there any other way and they said this is the way they kept saying this is the way i didn't understand what they meant and they showed me the ones with the pupils and uh um the ones where the pupils aren't perfectly straight the ones where the pupils are slightly off they are are able to block all the 3D programs and and they're the this is the way they get around the system. Almost and like a glitch with the pupil that allows the sorcery, the telecommunications not to work effectively. Wow. So the, then they showed me who the the crooked pupil ones, which I <laughs> this is a term we use, is um the ones that have all the alphabet diseases. Yeah. So autism. Yep. Uh, yeah. And uh, our kids have been labelled with a few of those diseases as well. They don't actually have any of those diseases, but um, no, actually, neither do I. Yeah. The kids were told at school that they had learning disabilities, and all it was was that they couldn't handle uh, reading under fluorescent lights. That's yeah. that's they classed it as a disease. So I I hate those <laughs> lights. Thank you for saying that. I hate those. I need soft lights fluorescent uh really white like i don't like it i like earth tony orangey glows low light uh yeah and just like that when i was a kid you know they they, they thought i was on the spectrum i was one of the trial for adhd redlin i was one of the first kids they put on there and a big part of this is all the star seeds and children that are connected and in tune the teachers don't want to deal with that and they're forcing their hand on trying to get these kids to fall into the system yeah. you know it's unfortunate and, yeah so they have um boxes of all the the kids that can accept the 3d program and then they have the other box <laughs> yeah and the other box are the crooked pupil ones it's the ones that are having the ringing ears uh it's all those kids and the ones that are classed as the problem ones are the ones that are avoiding the program. Yeah. And because they can block the program out naturally, they don't even have to try to block it out. They don't have to do any therapy. It's already blocked. And yeah. that is where we are now. And so uh, we all have a purpose here. We all have a journey. And we've encouraged quite a few uh, families who have children that have autism. And now they, instead of uh, treating their child as a disability, now they treat their child as a gift. It's and they an go advantage. And, yes. They go and do spiritual work and groundings and clearings and healings with their children. And it's quite amazing. It is. It's amazing to see the and but, but also see the relationship change with the parent and the child. So it's so this is where the sharing now is really starting to to help people. Um, and I, I agree. I think a lot of people um, that are in tune, we are on the spectrum, and how society has used the term being on the spectrum to view people with autism and other disabilities, ADHD, ADD, all these people, like there's nothing wrong with it. They're where they need to be. And to have a hyperactive mind, that's called human evolution. It's not my fault I can think about 50,000 things at once. That's evolution, that's not a disability. To be on the spectrum and to be in tune and be able to see what others can't, that's not a disability. It's an advantage. And that's amazing. You're helping other families work together and realize, you know, nothing is wrong and to embrace it, to learn from it and to help it grow. And with these so-called disabilities, 
the reason they become a disability is because people are not teaching us how to use it. And when you have a hyperactive mind or you're seeing on the spectrum, when I was a kid, all the words would all be all dyslexic. That's why their magic didn't work on me. I couldn't even see the the word magic they were trying to manipulate me with. And once we learn how to teach people and to teach our children and things, how to handle that. If you do have a hyperactive mind, how to put that intent and that focus, it can be the most valuable weapon so far from a disability. But no one is taking the time to teach these children uh, these things. I'm so happy that you are working with others and you've been doing that as a mother as well with your children. So fortunate and blessed. Yeah. So um, it's funny because you said dyslexic because the kids tease me. I've been teased all my life because I always say the sentences back to front and I always yep. read, I always say people's names back to front and uh, so uh, our um so when we're out in public, we have a lot of these children just come up to our children and they will do strange things to our children. Like we had one on the beach where he would, he would had like autism. So he'd run up on a rock and scream and then run down. And he was probably about, he was in probably coming of age years. So 15, a boy, Ginger and Gigi, our two daughters were surfing. They're great surfers. They're walking down the beach and we see this young boy run up and put his hands on their stomach and talk to their stomach and then fall to his knees and then stand up and he talks a primal language to them. And uh, I thought the kids knew him because we were a bit down the beach and we were walking and then I started realising, hang on, our girls might be in a little bit of a situation here because mm -hmm. you, we understand... Um, they're very attractive girls and so we thought we better go up and we went up and he was speaking like in a primal language to them and then falling to his knees in, in happiness and talking to their stomach. Yeah. Now, uh, what was interesting about it is he knew that they could see his inner child, his oversoul. He knew that they knew and that's what the connection was there. And we've had this happen many times. That's one example. So coming back to the craft, so we've got that cycle coming through. So we're back in the hypnosis state with Mary. I'm back in the craft. I'm still jelly, still moving around. We've had the sacred moment. Now they're showing me all the moments. They're showing me a near miss of planets. So they've mm. got all the planets moving, but not moving in the same way that uh, I've been taught a solar system moves. It moves differently than it moves um, like almost like around a dome that Gigi has drawn. And uh, what's happening is our cycle is becoming faster and they literally want us to be light beings. Mm -hmm. They really want us to be light beings to handle the faster cycles coming through because if we don't get into a light being state, the cycles that are speeding up will actually cause disease in our body because we haven't kept up with it because we're fighting it and holding it back rather than going with the flow. So they kept showing me it's a near miss, but the near miss has passed. That that moment, that near miss point has passed. So it was it was a shift. They showed me, um, then they showed me a huge clean white slate and then black, complete void, like, like a womb being mm -hmm. in the womb. And they showed me that. And then they showed me um, that it was a clean slate and that. Um, a birthing, a renewal. A renewal, a clean slate. And they showed me that. Uh, it's similar to a lot of the prophecies where they can't see past this point because it is up to imagination and not imagination as we know it, imagination as I, Magi, can. So I, I create, I'm, I'm the creator, I create the Magi, I can do it. Like that's what they were showing me. And uh, they then uh, when I 
came out of the hypnosis with Mary, I learned about um, a space program. I think it's called Through the Looking Glass or something. Project and, Looking Glass? Yeah. And uh, they showed me that um, I was like, oh, that's what they were saying, that they can't see past that. So a lot of the times uh, people will say, they'll hear my story and they'll go, oh, that's like this thing I heard or that's like this thing I heard. So it, it kind of is a confirmation for me in uh, with others. Mm. <laughs> with wow. um, with the uh, healing processes they taught me in the 10 years, they showed me how to heal through water and that water is the Akashic records. Water holds everything and intelligence does not come from the brain. It comes from water and it's held in the water. It's why they need water in the pyramids to uh, ignite the pyramids. They That's mean, why they what? built multiple pyramid sites around yep. the world. I had Jacques Doubleday saying they build these structures and they will literally build a river there just to comp it, you know, just it needs it. It's a part of it. That totally so you're we, right. We found pyramids all around us where we live, and uh the pyramids when we're around them, they talk to us and they mm -hmm. vibrate. And the, the day that I met that uh, astrologer in the UK was the day we went to one of the pyramid locations. Oh, wow. And uh, that, that was kind of bizarre that it was this, within an hour pretty much we went to this property. And anyway, so uh, having the water, if, if it's not in water, it can be in blood. Mm -hmm. So blood is water. Uh, and the water holds all the records. So one of the things that I say to people is you just, a lot of water has been contained in dams or water tanks or water bottles. When you pass water or when you are in the presence of water, treat it like another being and respect it and send it a, a good feeling. And our kids said, well, how do you, how do you send water a good feeling? And I said, well, why don't you think of something funny? So this is where the playful stuff comes in. So I said to them, I want you to think of the water as it's dinosaur pee. And they start laughing and they go, ew, dinosaur pee. And I said, I want you to look at the water as dinosaur pee. And as soon as you say that to them, they, they get this funny face and then they start to laugh. Now this is the laugh runs the happiness endorphin through them, which then transmits to the water. So this is the way I've taught our children to feel a good energy when you pass a water tank or when you pass a dam so yeah. that you're helping the water that's been contained to remember who it is, remember its codes so that when it comes or passes through us or others or whales or animals, the, the codes become more remembered. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and water is so important. My native tribe, the Beniki, were water people. My great grandfather, he built two magical canoes, and him and his friend Avery Rockefeller, the Rockefeller, would go out on these magical canoes. No one else was allowed to go on the lake, but uh, we, my tribe, we were known as the water people. Uh, our creation myth, we were created up out of water. We, uh, like Anunnaki, those created from above came down to earth. Well, Abenaki, uh, those created from a pond or a lake. We are water people. And my tribe, we do a lot of water blessings and water ceremonies and things. And absolutely correct. Water is, oh, and it's ancient. Dinosaur pee. You know, it's been, it's been here for a long time. And the history and the energy and how energy runs through water. And what are human beings? What's the number one thing in us? Like 96% water? You know, uh, that's what we are. We are essentially water beings with a little bit of electricity, our source energy, our light running through that. But that little bit of energy we have in us, we need that water so that energy can work through us and connect Sorry. to the water around us. That's it. Because because we're all here creating our own spin and the water needs to collect all the cre creation wants to create. That's the purpose. That's the point. 
So uh, the water wants to go through us because it is downloading and connecting too. So mm -hmm. now you're understanding that water is a being. So then you have your water being, then you have your oversoul, and then you have all the, you know, anti-bugs in you and the parasites in you. So now you're starting to realise how many beings do I have in me? <laughs> Scientifically, when you talk about bacteria and the things living on us, like we are an ecosystem. We are a planet to certain bacteria. We are that bacteria's universe. That's probably, that's pretty crazy to think about. Like you and I are a planet for bacteria and all sorts of other microorganisms. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun to think about. And it kind of resonates with the rest of the universe and what we are. We're nothing but a bacteria here on Gaia, Mother Earth, you know? Uh, it's yeah. the way well, of the yeah. universe. You look at the root word of gene and the root word of gene is germ yeah and we learned this just recently that there the human race time is running out that was the message i got and everyone thought oh that sounds like an apocalypse and i said no 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 race is the race of the adam coming to the egg that's the only human race there is and the reason that the human race time is running out is because it's the program of time is running out. It's the time program is over and now it's just replaying over and over, but it's really tired, it's really glumpy and grey and it's fragmenting big time for everyone as it has for us. Mm -hmm. and the human race, the only human race that there is, is the human race of the seed coming to the egg. And when you look at, I think it's called spermatosia, it's, it looks like a race and it looks like aliens coming to a planet. When you look at it's quite an amazing visual to see. And uh, it was, it, it's good to see because... Uh, I guess I, I, I look at everything in a playful and simple way so that I can explain it to the kids. But it also that, helps that me. Famous, that famous saying, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, that's how it needs to be because the universe really isn't that complex. We, as a species, overcomplicate it. Yes. No doubt about it. And Things everyone, are easy. Everyone loves a kiss, so... Yeah, exactly. The first thing you do to a baby, right? You see the mothers, and, not just humans, uh, animals, they lick and kiss their baby. And so just keep it simple. And, that's and, me with every animal I see, regardless if it's wild or not, or dangerous or poisonous. I just want to give every animal I see as many kisses as I can possibly do, even if they yeah. hate it. <laughs> so... So we have that craft experience with Mary, the hypnosis, and then I go and start doing the videos. So as I'm doing the videos of the hypnosis and the experiences with Mary, I'm now channeling and collect uh, time traveling through the frequency of my own voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's quite a bizarre experience as well. So we don't call time travel time travel. We call it moment collecting where you go back to a moment and you either do a regress or you replay it and you expand it and collect all the detail out of it that you missed because your consciousness at that point, at that moment of when you were that age, wasn't ready for the information. So now you go back and you recollect the information which creates expansion. You collect that information and then you bring it forth to where you are in the present and then you expand. And so that's what we do. We, we go back and so we can be in the presence now of other people and collect their moments. So I can be with someone and they'll talk to me about their ET experience and then I instantly like get like a tunnel and I go back with them and experience and see what information is there for me and then i bring it back to this presence yeah wow that's amazing and yeah. you know going forward so this all has led to what you are doing now right 
and <laughs> you you have an awesome website and for everyone that's watching all of her information will be down in the description but um can you just talk a little bit about what you're doing some of the things you have in the works talk about spinbeings.com and all that good stuff and what you're doing with your family and working together as you said to connect to others and um yeah just uh tell everyone how they can get a hold of you i'll have that down in the description so uh um so since christmas last year we've come out to the public uh so everyone up until this point has only known richard and i as the family of eight um they're a bit different you know they do things naturally uh and they're the photographers you know they've traveled the world they're photographers so there's there's that side of us and then we come out with all this information so everyone goes huh so all those years we've known you you've been doing what <laughs> yeah and it wasn't that we didn't we wanted to keep a secret from them it's just that we did test um friends and family along the way with the information and as soon as they heard it they would just switch us off mm -hmm. which was fine that was fine but we just knew that it wasn't ready we started to realize um at Christmas time last year, that they could use the uh, beings as uh, manipulation. And uh, my mouth was regressing, my, my whole mouth was regressing, and I realised that the only way to naturally heal regressing mouth is to speak up. So yeah. I started speaking up, I started doing the videos, I started, you know, being more public and my my gums free healed. So now I'm doing it for cosmetic reasons. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it doesn't cosmetic matter surgery. what why you're doing it or for what reason. Now oh. is the time to speak. It it's now. We waited until it was the right time. And that yes. time has came for all of us within this community. And you're right. Now is the time to do it. And uh, Mary was very gracious with us. She said, look, I don't know how to present a lot of this to the public just yet. And that was in February of this year. Mm -hmm. She said, I don't know how they're going to cope because your information that you're sharing crosses over the spiritual realms, crystals, indigenous. Uh, it crosses everything. Over it's everything. Then it's now it's beings and animals and animal encounters and military and you've got all that encounters. So it crosses over all of them. And generally, she said, they like to keep it separate. So you have your angels and you have all your angelic ones and then you have your ET people and then you have your near-death people. And it's like, no. Nah, it's, it's all, all the same. <laughs> it's all connected. <laughs> it's they all want the division because the more they can separate everything, the less people will come together and realize from the paranormal to the extraterrestrial to the spiritual to the religious to the scientific to the mathematical to the historical they don't want people to put everything together because that will bring us all together and that ain't good for business but it's no. good for what we are doing for the terra gaia mother earth that's what it's about so so that's amazing it is it is amazing and uh what is interesting mary saying that i always remember mary saying that because that was in february of this year how rapid it has changed from february this year to now we're in november the expansion has i you you feel it. i know you feel it it's been huge in that and, and so if you if we're having that no wonder they can't see the future yeah that's one thing they cannot predict is how quickly humans, and I think I feel that that's probably one of the reasons that we're so interesting to all these beings, is how quickly we can shift it. Mm -hmm. There's something in it that they're watching for their benefit because they're probably us or we're probably them anyway, and they will, will it, it will evolve that technologies from it. Uh, and it's it's exciting it's exciting it's um a lot of surrendering um a lot of having compassion for a lot of people at, the, at this moment um we love and our, compassion mm -hmm. we yeah a lot of the time um you know i just say to the kids they say what do we do how do we stop them doing that i said you you can't you have to wait for them when they're ready they will stop 
that they're hurting animals or they're hurting their children or they're hurting themselves. And I said, well, you're meant to see that to make give you the drive to do what you have to do here, your role here. Yeah. And they understand. But it, it's, it's, it's tough, you know. It is tough seeing this stuff go on around you, you know, people passing away. But because our kids now talk to their ghosts or their their past loved ones or their lost souls, it makes it much more uh, eternal. And it's a, they it's realize a good... that nothing is ever truly gone. Yeah. 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 And yeah. suffering leads to compassion. And that's what yes. you're getting at. And compassion leads to suffering. It does hurt to have a compassionate heart for a world that's hurting so much. And vice yeah. versa, the suffering we go through to build our character so we can understand the compassion and show that onto others absolutely wonderful words and um thank you so much elsa for uh coming on the show it's been a blast and uh i hope everyone will check out the website spinbeings.com a lot of amazing stuff on there and was there anything you wanted to add with that before uh we close it out uh you're, you're here for a reason. There is no randoms. You're really here for a reason. Every time you cross a path, every time you cross an animal or a rock, or you're here for a reason, look into that reason because it will bring you peace. It will bring you peace. And we need that at the moment. <laughs> Beautiful. That's the way we're going to end it right there. So thank you again. I uh, really appreciate you coming out and I'm so happy all the things you are doing as a family, your daughters, these amazing, uh, you know, paintings she's doing and all that and how you're all working together as a unit. Thank you so much for sharing all this uplifting and amazing experiences and information. I'll definitely have to have you come back on because I know we only scraped the surface of everything, but truly a pleasure everyone make sure you go down in the description check out her links and information if you want to reach out to her and get in contact also down in the description you will find my links social donations all that good stuff so if you want to contact me you will find that all down there and i hope to see you all next time remember we are the disclosure this is a new era of contact we are making it happen and we will see you all next time have a wonderful and amazing night, everyone, and much love from Australia and from America and from the rest of the galaxy to you, wherever you may be or what dimension you may be in. We love you, love and light to all, and we'll, we will see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Please join the YouTube membership for my channel. You will get exclusive badges, really awesome emojis, member-only live streams, posts, and chats, and connections with me for only $5.99 a month. See you there. Hey everyone, check out the Order of Light merchandise store. We got a lot of different t-shirts there. The Humans Aren't Real, Lower Always Creek Incident. We got tank tops and Merkaba. We got stickers, glasses, a lot of different glasses. So get thirsty. We got bags. I live in New Jersey. We don't have bags anymore. So it's really nice. We got flip-flops, hoodies, and all the ladies out there. We got a bunch of awesome merchandise.